The top foods for diabetes. In this video, I will inform you about 11 beneficial and affordable foods that aid in managing blood sugar levels. You must pay attention and make sure to include in your diet. And I am listing here the foods that have a favorable price point, those food items that you can easily locate and also purchase that are affordable and reasonably priced. And hash one is the egg. The egg is an excellent food. Before you ask if eggs increase cholesterol, that is a big myth. Eggs are good for cholesterol. They can even increase HDL levels. And here I'm talking about the egg, the egg white and the yolk. Many think they have to remove the yolk because it has fat, but this fat is a type of good fat. In addition to being a source of protein, which is excellent for diabetics, for maintaining muscle mass and also for muscle growth, which is very good for blood sugar control, eggs can also improve cognition, memory, vision, and have various vitamins and minerals. So the egg is a great food for individuals with diabetes. I was informed that individuals with renal issues are unable to consume eggs. This is also a falsehood. It is something that has been discussed for numerous years but protein intake is not contraindicated. On the contrary, it is recommended for individuals who have kidney problems because you also require proteins to survive. Of course, if you consume an excess of proteins, if you eat 12, 15 eggs per day, then it will be harmful, okay? But here I'm talking about consuming one to two eggs per day. There is no problem with the kidneys either. Good for metabolism, okay? Myth. People with kidney problems cannot consume protein. This is actually a big, you cannot have excess protein. Agreed? Number two is one of the finest foods in the world. Not only for those who have diabetes, but also for those who do not have diabetes. This food here reduces the risk of heart attack. And it's very important. It's very beneficial for health, which is olive oil. Ah, but olive oil is costly. It should not be on this list. This is also not true because the dosage of olive oil in order for you to experience the cardiovascular advantages, such as minimizing stroke, for instance, or even heart attack, as I previously stated, is seven milliliters per day. What is this? I will speak in spoons. Someone mentioned in the next video, discuss spoons is easier to comprehend. So what would be seven milliliters of olive oil? If it's a tablespoon, it's half a tablespoon per day. If it is a teaspoon, it is one and a half teaspoons which would be approximately seven milliliters. An average tablespoon has 15 milliliters and the teaspoon typically contains five milliliters. To get seven, you need to do this calculation as I taught you, okay? Many people say it's expensive because they exaggerate the dose, but it's not true. I remember once I went to a friend of mine, that was last year, he asked if I liked omelet. I said, so I'll make one for you here. And olive oil, do you like it too? I said, no, you can put olive oil that I like. When my omelette dish arrived, the omelette was floating in olive oil. This type of consumption, besides being expensive because you are using an absurd amount of olive oil, I don't know how much there was. I didn't measure it. At first there was about 200 milliliters. It was a lot of olive oil. It was unbelievable. And I've seen many people do this too. Besides being expensive, it'll be bad for your health. Olive oil, despite being healthy, is very caloric. Consuming an excess of calories will worsen insulin resistance, exacerbate the entire process of sugar metabolism in the blood, and lead to an even further increase in calorie intake. Be cautious with the dose. Consuming 7 milliliters of olive oil is good for your heart, diabetes, and cost-effective. Take care not to exceed the recommended amount. If you purchase 1 liter, for example, 7 milliliters, it lasts about 6 months. Hence, it's highly beneficial to consume extra virgin olive oil. Many individuals also inquire about pork fat. Pork lard is not beneficial for individuals with diabetes. There is a large quantity of saturated fats, a distinct type of fat from the one discovered in olive oil. Additionally, the oils like soybean oil and sunflower oil, when compared to olive oil, olive oil is found to be superior to all of them. Are we in agreement? The third item on the list is citrus fruits like lemon, orange and acerola which I have a strong preference for. And how can you consume the lemon, for example? You can put it in the food as it has many vitamins that you can utilize to season the food in this situation. You can use it as juice or make flavored water 
providing several options for using lemon. Personally, I enjoy drinking water with a slice of lemon and making flavored water as it is delicious and yields a large quantity. Many people find it worthwhile and believe in its benefits. However, it is important to note that lemon is not a miraculous cure for diabetes, just like none of the other foods mentioned here. I'm not saying that, I'm talking about foods that have the potential to help along with other measures for blood sugar control, okay? So this story that a food will only cure, a food will only do wonders, all of this is a lie. Don't believe in that talk that it doesn't exist, okay? Diabetes control is done with a series of measures that you do every day to achieve the result. So lemon, orange as well. In case you consume orange, make sure to eat it with the pulp, all right? Always with fibers because it helps in the absorption of sugar and reduces the glycemic index of food. When digesting, no blood sugar spike or need for insulin spike, which is intriguing and worth noting. Acerola, you can eat too. The acerola juice is good. You have to be careful with the juices here, okay? So orange juice is not good for diabetics. Why? Because you end up removing the fibers and that sugar that remains, the fruit sugar, it becomes very concentrated and the glycemic index also increases because it lacks the fibers. So orange juice, even if it's whole, is not interesting. If it's lemon juice or acerola juice, then it can be, because it has a glycemic load, a lower amount of sugar than other fruits. I'm going to leave an asterisk here on citrus fruits, which is about pineapple. Despite being a very good fruit, you must be cautious with the amount. Due to its glycemic load, it contains a greater amount of sugar compared to other citrus fruits and also has a higher glycemic index. Be careful with quantity, okay? Prohibit it, don't fully avoid if you like, but you must restrict it. Take care of the quantity of pineapple. Number four. And this is also one of the best foods in the world. What is chia? And I'm going to add flaxseed here. This kind of food is extremely high in fiber and fiber slows down the absorption of carbohydrates. In addition to aiding with feeling full, you will consume a smaller amount of food. To maintain a healthy diet, it is important to include chia and flaxseed, even if you have diverticula. People frequently mention this Oh, I have diverticula. Can I utilize chia and flaxseed? Not only can you, but you should, because these foods, the fibers, besides decreasing the risk of colorectal cancer, also safeguard you from experiencing a diverticulitis crisis. They protect your intestine. So chia and flaxseed are great foods. Ah, but what if I'm currently having an acute diverticulitis crisis? Then you will have to make a series of restrictions. Among these restrictions, you will have to avoid consuming chia seeds, but only in this circumstance. If you have diverticula, this is not a contraindication. Let it be clear here, okay? You can use it calmly. This has already been studied. It's not my opinion. There are scientific studies that report security. These fibers, chia for example, also have a type of fat that can improve your cholesterol, which is a good fat, in addition to reducing the absorption of sugars and lowering the glycemic index of a meal, for example. Enhance your digestion, experience increased satisfaction, and consume fewer calories. A lot of people inquire about oatmeal. If you compare oatmeal with flour, like white flour, oatmeal is actually better in terms of nutritional value. But if you compare oats with chia and flaxseed, it's worth choosing chia and flaxseed because oats, despite also having fibers, also have this function in the intestine. Oats are rich in carbohydrates and sugars. More than half of the composition of oats, about 65%, is carbohydrates. And when you eat carbohydrates, your body converts a good portion of them into sugar. So even if you don't put sugar in the oatmeal, as I've been told, oh, but I only eat oatmeal without sugar. I don't put honey, for example. Just by consuming oatmeal, you will already be ingesting more carbohydrates that your body will later convert into sugar. So if you have the possibility to choose, choose chia and flaxseed. Beauty, number five. Before I discuss the number five, I would like to ask if you are enjoying this video. If you are, please click like if you think this video is relevant, because this way the system understands that the video is good and has important information here as it actually does and ends up spreading to more people. So our goal in today's video will be 11,000 likes. The goal of 10,000 likes is already behind us. Now it's 11,000, okay? Let's proceed with the list. 
Number five is another superb food for diabetics, which is fish. Since fish are rich in protein and also contain healthy fats, they are considered beneficial for diabetics due to their positive impact on blood sugar management. So it is worthwhile to include fish in your diet. And here I will not restrict only to tuna and salmon because in many regions, this is considered to be expensive. I am discussing in the video about inexpensive food. Therefore, consume the fish that you have access to. If it is a harem that many people like, such as sardines and codfish, you should see the fish that is in your region. If you consume it, you'll be consuming a source of lean protein, which is great for diabetics. If you have access to salmon and tuna, there are more studies on omega-3 in heart protection, which is interesting for diabetics. But I'm not going to limit myself here only to these fish. Number six, avocado. There are several studies with avocado because avocado is low in carbohydrates and rich in good fats, monounsaturated fats, which also help with cholesterol. Just so you have an idea, a portion of avocado around 120 grams, this will have an average of two to three carbohydrates, which is very interesting for diabetics because it will not increase their blood sugar. Do you recall when I mentioned olive oil? The same applies to avocado. It's a very healthy food, but high in calories. Having one portion daily of 100, 120 G is good for health without consuming excess calories and maintaining a balanced diet. Number seven, red fruits like strawberry, cherry, and the red apple are also highly fascinating for individuals with diabetes due to their health benefits. These fruits possess a low glycemic index and a low glycemic load, along with a low quantity of carbohydrates as well. Watermelon, many inquire, can individuals with diabetes consume watermelon? Yes, you are able to. Watermelon, despite having a higher glycemic index than the other fruits I mentioned, has a lower glycemic load, a smaller amount of carbohydrates than the others, so it can be consumed. And you often ask what the glycemic index is that I talk so much about. Glycemic index when consuming food is how much it raises blood sugar levels upon ingestion. Is this the definition of glycemic index, all right? Therefore, when consuming watermelon, it possesses the capacity to raise slightly more than other types of fruits. However, due to its reduced carbohydrate and sugar content per serving, it is also beneficial for individuals with diabetes. In addition, 90% of watermelon is composed of water, so you also hydrate yourself so you can eat watermelon. Red fruits are rich in antioxidants that fight free radicals, they are rich in anti-inflammatory substances. Multiple studies show the benefits of red fruits. The idea that diabetics can't eat fruits is a big myth. You can, but you must. It's not fructose that's harmful, but rather the excess of fructose. That will raise your blood sugar level. However, you can consume fruits in a very calm and relaxed manner, which will be beneficial for your health. Just avoid excessive consumption Number eight, legumes. And I'm going to highlight here the beans because it's also a source of protein. Beans, despite also having carbohydrates, are rich in fiber, protein, are a great food and are also cheap. What other legumes are also good? Fantastic, I'm gonna put this word here to be more emphatic, radish. I also really like eggplant. And here I'm talking about you eating eggplant with the fibers that provide added nutritional benefits. This can help control your blood sugar because it is rich in fiber. It has a type of fiber that is very good for diabetics. And I'm not talking here about eggplant juice or eggplant capsules. It's you eating the eggplant. Cauliflower is also very good for diabetics. Broccoli, yet another fantastic legume for individuals managing diabetes effectively. And here you ask a lot, is it true that broccoli, cauliflower, cruciferous vegetables harm the thyroid? No, it is not true. There are multiple studies that have demonstrated the safety of consuming broccoli. Besides not harming the thyroid, it is good for your body, serving as a source of multiple nutrients. And why do many people say that? There was a study in rats where the rats only ate broccoli and cauliflower. They only ate cruciferous vegetables. And these rats developed a goiter and hormonal problems. What is goiter is when the thyroid becomes enlarged. So these rats that only ate broccoli had a problem. When these studies were done in humans, 
this did not happen. Because you're not going to eat only broccoli every day, three, four kilos of broccoli, right? You can eat calmly, well rested, without harming your thyroid. It is good for your health and will not have any negative impact on your thyroid gland. Number nine. Additionally, I have a strong preference for this particular one. Cashew nut, Brazil nut, pistachio, macadamia, hazelnut, almonds are all included in it. They are outstanding foods that have the potential to reduce inflammation and also aid in controlling blood sugar levels because they are low in carbohydrates and sugars and additionally contain a type of healthy fat that can help with managing your cholesterol levels effectively. However, these foods that are abundant in good fats are also more calorie dense. So you have to be cautious with the quantity. Consuming two nuts daily, for example, or two chestnuts would already be adequate for you to acquire multiple nutrients such as selenium and zinc, which are beneficial for supporting your metabolism. They are essential even for the function of the thyroid. So they are great foods than coffee. I am a huge fan of coffee. I consume coffee on a daily basis. Coffee is a type of food that has the potential for anti-inflammatory effects and has been studied. There was an intriguing one that I will share where he compared coffee drinkers up to four cups, emphasizing the significance of the 200 milliliters dose and compared them to non-drinkers. And individuals who consumed coffee had a 33% reduced likelihood of developing type two diabetes in comparison to those who did not consume coffee. So coffee is a protective factor from a metabolic point of view. Many discussed dose, I mentioned about four cups, so up to four cups of 200 milliliters, or if it's espresso coffee, up to four doses of 50 mil, as each dose, each cup of coffee has around 100 milligrams of caffeine, and safe dose of caffeine is up to 400 milligrams per day. I've already made a specific video about coffee, then I will leave the recommendation for you. We're just gonna finish our list here. The 11th number represents our final food, which is green leaves like lettuce, arugula, kale, and spinach. These foods are not only excellent for diabetics, but also beneficial for metabolism and rich in nutrients. Moreover, they are affordable and provide valuable sources of nourishment. How many of these 11 foods do you consume? Write in the comments and also rate this video from zero to 10 because if it is 10, I will make more videos like this. From which part of the world are you watching this video? From which city? I speak from Porto Alegre. Put your city here in the comments. I always enjoy reading. Now I am going to provide you with a suggestion to watch. A video where I discussed vegetables. Did you know there are veggies to be cautious with if you have diabetes? In this video here, I explain about it. I speak the best and worst vegetables for people with diabetes. I'm sure you'll like it. It'll be useful too. A hug. Until next time.